Hey guys, so I was talking to a remote client today, um, athlete, runner who lives in Madison, Wisconsin, and he has what he calls an old man injury, which means that he strained his hamstring uh, training for a Grand Canyon run next year. As these things sometimes go when you pull a muscle when you're over 40, it can take a little time to recover. And he and I were talking about, you know, what are the things I need to be looking at as this is getting better. I told him that I wanted to take a look at his sciatic nerve tension because the sciatic nerve, as it exits the spine, runs through the glutes and runs right down through both heads of the hamstring, which is right where he was having some of his pain. And so I wanted to share with him and with you the diagnostic um, test that I use to determine whether a hamstring strain actually has some sciatic nerve sensitivity component. And based on what you find, there are a number of ways to treat that. So you can either desensitize the nerve to stretching or you can improve the ability of the nerve to slide. The first test I'm gonna share is called a straight leg raise test. I have a, a band or a strap around my heel. I'm gonna use that strap to sort of passively pull my leg up into flexion with my foot pulled into dorsiflexion. So not pointed, but sort of pulled up toward my shin. When I hit a point where I start feeling tension, I'm going to note where I feel that. In this case, I feel in the back of my knee and in my hamstring. If for my client, the symptoms that he feels are overtly painful, if it reproduces his hamstring stuff, then we know we have a positive test. Some, pe some people might feel it in their glute. Some people might even feel it in their feet or in their low back. The second thing you're gonna do is relax your foot and see if it changes the symptoms. You know it's a nerve sensitivity to tension because by moving my ankle, I shouldn't feel less symptoms in my hamstring muscle um, unless we're talking about sensitivity in the nervous system. That's what connects the hamstring and the foot in this situation. So symptoms are intense here. I relax, symptoms go away. That confirms that there's some amount of nerve sensitivity. Now know that some nerve sensitivity is normal, but you shouldn't have um, significantly more on one side than the other. So then you're gonna test the other side. Same thing, pull the foot up to the shin. You're gonna pull the leg up. Now know that some people might have symptoms really low. Some people might not have symptoms till they get up very high. And that's okay. We're looking for the difference between the two sides. So if he brings his leg up and he feels like he gets to the same spot and has the exact same sensitivity tension in the good side, then we may not be dealing with an adverse neural tension. It may just be a normal, normal neural sensitivity. Same thing, you can test, relax here, see if it goes away. I'm looking for differences between the good side and the injured side before I make any decision about how to treat this. Test number two looks not at neural tension, but it looks at the ability of the nerve to slide, glide, floss through the tissues. So for this test, you're gonna sit up on something high enough where your feet are off the ground. You're gonna slouch your head, and then you're also gonna slouch your whole entire upper back to the point where you're, you're not falling forward, you're balanced on your, on your rear end, but you're slouched as fully as you can be. I'm gonna pull my foot to my shin, just like I did before, and then I'm gonna straighten my knee to the point where I feel tension. So in this case, I feel it again, sort of in my hamstring, back of my knee. You can see I can't quite get my knee fully straight. If I now lift my head, and I feel the sensitivity go away, that tells me that as I let tension out of the nervous system, nervous system and I let it slide fully down to my foot and there's less sensitivity that I have some amount of limited neural sliding on this side. If I go ahead and I bowstring the nervous system from my brain down to my feet and there's a lot of sensitivity, that tells me that the nerve could potentially be sliding more. Now, of course, I'm gonna compare that to the other side so I'm gonna stay in my slump position. I'm gonna pull my foot into dorsiflexion up to my shin, and I'm gonna straighten my knee. I'm gonna make a note where I feel it. In this case, on me, it's a lot more sensitive on this side. I feel it in my hamstring way more. If I lift up my head, and it reduces, which it does, way more than it did on this side. It kind of stayed intense on this side. On this side, I have almost complete relief. That tells me that the nerve sensitivity to sliding on the right is much higher than it is on the left. And that's gonna help me make a decision, especially if this is the injured hamstring side, that's gonna help me make a decision of how I go about mobilizing that nerve to get it flossing, sliding through the tissue again. You guys, old man or old woman injuries are not hard to treat, but they're oftentimes when you need to consider healing time, 
there are also times when you need to think about some other variables. And one of the most commonly missed variables in hamstring injuries is sciatic nerve sensitivity that remains persistent after the injury. Once you've cleaned that up, you can get back to strengthening that muscle and your chances of re-injury are significantly lower. So I'm gonna follow up in a few days with my client after I give him, him a prescription. I'll share with you what he found and I'll share with you some um, of the recommendations I made to him based on those findings. Yeah.